thank you all for coming and being a part of this. And um, if you haven't done so yet, you can uh, click on the Q and A at the bottom. You probably have a little red dot on it right now, and and go in and tell us where you're coming from. Or you can it, once you open that, you can see. Um, what all, where, where people are from. It's also where you can ask questions as we go along. And we have our director of programs monitoring that thread. So some questions she can just answer on the spot and then other ones we'll take and we'll give you a little bit of time at the end to, to ask those also. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, let's do that by praying first. Welcome Holy Spirit. We welcome you into our midst, into our hearts, into this time together. Mm, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Well, and welcome to you all also. I'm Gordon West. I'm the uh, president and co-founder of Kids at Heart International. Um, had the, the privilege 20 years ago to start Kids at Heart with my late wife, Becky. And we are so excited to have you with us tonight. Um, thank you so much for logging in. We have never done this before. And so this is an experiment. It's, it's, a, uh, it's, just, it's a fun time. What we want it to be is a fun time to get people together who love children, love bringing the Holy Spirit and, and children together, and just share with you some of the things that have been going on. And so, of course, we have these all month, and uh, would love to have you be a part of it. And I especially want to thank Krista, Vivian, and Lotus for being our guinea pigs coming along and, and trying this for the very first time. So we're going to kind of focus on how this all plays into a local church and into real lives. That's our focus tonight. But first, let me introduce to you one of our executive staff members, Maureen Berger, is our Vice President of Programs for North America. Um, years ago, we, we realized that we were very international and not doing a lot in North America. And now we have a lot happening in North America, a lot of that because of Maureen, who um, it has come to us after a, a long and distinguished career with Child Evangelism Fellowship. She's an expert trainer, expert in children, and now she's coordinating all of North America for us. So Maureen, take it away. Thank you, Gordon. It is a privilege to be with you guys. And I get to introduce one of my favorite people. There's lots of you mine as too, well listening. Too. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. But I get to work with her on a daily basis. And that is Krista Fountain. She is the Director of Training for Canada. And we get to work alongside each other to see and the training of kids across Canada. Krista, long before she recently joined kids, has used the training material that kids uses around the world. And so she has experience not only in Canada with kids, but much broader. So, but we're going to focus on Canada tonight. Yeah. So, so let's go. Let's go yeah, to Canada. Let's go. Let's go to Canada. Krista. Edmonton to be, not Edmonton, actually. No. Outside. <laughs> Edmonton. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. we, we discussed before you all came, my lack of geographical knowledge. But anyway, <laughs> let's go to Canada. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, it's good to be with you. Uh, I was transformed, really, by the Transforming Kids Ministry material while I taught it in Nepal a few years ago. When I came home from the second trip, I was convinced that we needed to experience these spiritual formational practices here in Canada. So as the children's pastor of my church, I taught it to my teachers first, and I pra practiced it on my kids in my children's ministry. I have been amazed to see how the Holy Spirit has directed my teaching. I have been in awe watching many of these kids, often a whole classroom of them, on their knees in repentance as God speaks to them. Their insights are deep and they're varied as they respond to the Bible stories, and their willingness to participate in worship is beautiful. I asked the participants in the two trainings that locations that are happening in Canada to send me stories of how what they're learning through the Kids at Heart material in, is impacting their teaching and their students. And they sent me pages and pages of stories of impact. They're fantastic. One mom <clears throat> shared the impact that hearing God through scripture has had on her two teenagers 
the two teens who are often at odds with one another were being led by mom uh, through the hearing God through scripture. And they both heard God speak to them from the same scripture, different messages. They were able to talk through their differences um, as they individually heard from God. One teacher filled a, a full page telling about how her teaching has been transformed and the students' interactions with the Bible has grown. She's tried things she's never tried before, and they worked. And she stated, if every Sunday school teacher and kids club leader would take this training early in their careers, they would be really effective Bible teachers. Wow. Others talked about methods of being effective in cross-cultural settings in uh, African churches or Arabic churches that they're in attending. And many, many people talked about personal spiritual growth. One of those people who's been a participant in the very first Transforming Kids Ministry training here in Canada is Vivian. Uh, she attends my church. She's a good friend. She's been a Sunday school teacher for longer than I have. Vivian, you have some stories to tell us. Well, even though I've taught Sunday school for many years, Krista, I'm always wanting to learn and improve my teaching skills and, of course, grow in my walk with the Lord. And through the training that we received, we were really reminded of the importance of and the importance of practicing the dis discipline of listening to God, of, of hearing his voice, of expecting it, and to make time for it. Well, we were also taught that this discipline should be taught to our children. Well, currently I'm teaching ages five to seven, kindergarten to grade two. And I thought, no, this is not going to work. But we were encouraged through the training as we went through it, that this would be something, just a quiet time of children listening for God. Well, we had built the burning bush that God spoke to Moses through. And as the young children sat around the burning bush, I decided this is a great time to listen for God. And we had our little quiet time. I was shocked. There wasn't a whisper. There wasn't a move. It was just quiet time. I thought, what is God doing? Well, no child came up to me and said what God had, if God had spoke to him. But again, I was encouraged to do this again around our Thanksgiving tree. And the kids sat around. We had our quiet time just listening to see what would God speak to their hearts. Well, a little boy did say he heard. He did hear nothing from God. And I went, oh, no. And I said, well, you know, maybe Ms. McKee didn't have us quiet long enough. But I said, God is always speaking. He will speak to you. And although I thought, oh, you know, this child, this child said, oh, I didn't hear anything. But I thought what the child did do is he listened. He practiced that discipline. I will be implementing this over and over again because I want children to know that they can expect to hear from God, that they need to make time to hear from God, and they will be adults that grow in their walk with Christ and they will hear from God. And it's exciting. And it's exciting for me as a teacher. <laughs> Thank you, Vivian. That's great. Now, Lotus has been involved in our church since she was just a, a little girl in our children's ministry. And, and for probably the last eight years or so, I've had the privilege of teaching her and discipling her. So Lotus, we would love to hear how you've grown spiritually over the last few years. Well, when Krista told me I was doing this meeting, she told me to reflect on the past six years of my life. And mind you, I'm only 16. So six years is like a solid portion of my life. Yes. Um, and I was like, well, it's not only just like my spirituality that's maturing, it's every single aspect of who I am. So with these different aspects maturing, I've been able to like experience different things in life. And with like the different things that Krista that's been teaching me and like Awanas and Sunday school, I've been able to like apply those to those life situations. And it just like changed everything because it's like total different reactions. Um, so yeah, definitely like the maturity of who I am definitely helped like mature my faith. Um, I can remember like, I think it was, yeah, Pastor, Pastor Krista was um, talking in Awanas and I remember being able to feel the Holy Spirit for the first time. It was, it was during a quiet time like Vivian was talking about. And I can remember feeling the Holy Spirit. And I was just, there was so much peace and joy at the same time. It was just like, oh, this is so crazy. This has gotta be God. And it was, I can't tell, I can't tell you what the 
like the message was but I remember like coming home and like being so excited to tell my mom and dad and like it just felt like that was like the first step of like building that relationship purposely for God and it was it was just such a good feeling I mean I was like 12 years old at the time so I didn't really fully understand what was happening but like it was just so exciting um more recently I like had my baptism this summer with by Krista and it was just such an amazing experience and I've been able to just like apply all these different lessons that Kids at Heart teaches to like my life and it's it's been amazing um I recently started Bible stu- Bible study at my school and I help out at Awanas and I help out at my church and seeing how Kids at Heart works with different kids is just so crazy because God works in so many ways so that's been my experience yeah. Oh, Lotus, nice. thank you so much. And, yeah. you know, we do have a bit of time for some questions. If you'd like to go down to that Q&A uh, chat spot and ask any, but I have one for you, Lotus. <clears throat> um, as you know, our, um, our training it focuses a lot on spiritual practices and things where we can put ourselves out there where the Holy Spirit you know, give, give the time and our availability so, so that we can hear from God. Are there some um, practices that you've learned uh, through Krista's leadership that are especially meaningful for you? Some things that you enjoy doing that God shows up when you do those things? Um, I'm fairly extroverted, so I love talking. We can hardly tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love talking. I love socializing. So that's definitely what my prayer life looks like. It's a lot of me talking to God. And with Chris's help, I've been able to take that step back and realize I got to listen to if I want to hear God. I can't do all the talking because if I do all the talking, I'm not going to hear anything. So I realized if I just take that couple of minutes every single day to just step back and reflect on my faith and who God is, I've been able to hear God a lot more clear because my mind's not busy with all these intrusive thoughts is just quiet time, which is something I've really struggled with. Cause like I said, I love talking. <laughs> I, I might relate to you on that matter, Lotus. So I, I might understand that. Um, and yeah, there's, there are times um, for us to just, just be still and know that he's God. And it's amazing when we are, how did you, you, you said some of it, but how did you know when you first felt the Holy spirit first heard from him? How, what did that, how, how did you know that was God? it's something I've never felt before. And it was like, well, how do I, I struggle to say question? I'm like, how do I know if that is God? And it was the result that came from that feeling that led to who God is, like God's character. So I realized if, I, if this relates to God's character, that must have been God. It was just like this amazing feeling of like peace and joy and like craziness, but like stillness at the same time. Like it was just everything. I was like, oh, this literally can be nothing else. Uh, Lotus, it is so good to hear that. And I, I so wish... <laughs> that I had your experience uh, when I was your age. It took me a whole lot of years to, to explore that. Um, Vivian, are, are, there, are there ways that you would want to share with us um, what, the, uh, what that experience is for you? How has it changed your feeling about teaching? Well, I... <laughs> I think with the young children, sometimes we don't expect young children to be able to hear or understand God or, and, and I think with this, like with the quiet time and also with how we were doing our Bible stories, you know, it, it, it could be a time where you would just have a child sit in front of a video and watch the video story. You know, are they really understanding? Are they really experiencing God? And, and I think for me, it's, you know, children are not just brought to share a, a Bible story when they come to Sunday school. Yes, that's part of it, but they need to experience the present of, presence of God and know that he is alive and, and he is willing to speak to them. And I, I truly believe as, as a young child, I know the Lord spoke to me and I believe that the Lord speaks to these little hearts and, and minds and and that will have an impact and give them a foundation and a base as they grow in Christ. And as you, you said, Gordon, like why wait till you're an adult to learn how to, to hear from God? Mm. He, well, and, and, as you say, we, you know, I, I've been a children's pastor for a long, long time. And I think where we've gone astray is teaching kids about God 
and forgetting to connect them with God. Yes. Um, because yeah. even as Lotus, I loved that you said you couldn't remember the, the lesson, you couldn't remember the content, but you remembered God was there. And that, that really makes the difference. Yes. Just one last question, uh, Krista, if I could ask this of you, how have the parents at church reacted? Has, has this worked out okay? Or you've yet, you had some growing pains as you introduced this, these concepts and the practices? Or? I don't remember there being any pushback to it. Um, but for those parents who um, I'm maybe closer friends with, and we talk about what the kids are doing in Sunday school quite regularly, they, they will often come back and tell me how the conversation continued at home. Um, so, so that's been really good. Oh, excellent. We have one more question from the audience, and this one's directed to you, Vivian. Um, you talked about introducing that quiet time with kids, but are there other ways that you have changed how you teach? And may I add to that and how you prepare to teach? Yeah. Um, prepare to teach, it, it starts the Sunday when I walk out of class from that Sunday. And I, I've been one that's always Sunday afternoon. I'm looking at what the lesson is next week. And that gives me an opportunity, whether I'm reading other scripture or looking for activities, it gives the Lord a whole week to speak to my heart and mind about the lesson. And I've done that whether I taught adults or whether it's been little ones. It starts that Sunday, that Sunday afternoon. So another thing that I've done is I, I, I kind of got in a rut. You know, you, you teach for years, but you always need new tips and techniques. And I found myself falling into a rut of putting the children in front of a video for their, their story. And um, through Kids at Heart, it got me going again. It probably was one of the hardest modules I took in the training. And that was to, you know, get more drama and more feeling and more action in the stories, you know. And my goodness, I started doing that. I mean, it is so much fun. I mean, the, the burning bush was great. The shipwreck with Paul. I mean, we had water and drums and lightning and we had crackers halfway through and we were swimming to shore and it was so much fun. And I, and I, and I might use a video to, you know, have them just sit quiet and just, you know, go back over the story and, and be able then to ask questions and see how much they got from the story. But, but that's something that has really changed. And it's just so much, so much fun for me. I think the kids get a lot of fun out of it, but it has really given me joy in my Sunday school prep for those little ones. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you all three have been just a delight. Uh, don't you agree, Maureen? You, yes, I, it's I see been you... so much fun. I see why you enjoy working with our Canadian crew. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much for being with us and kicking off this series of Let's Go Trips. Um, it, it's so exciting to hear uh, the, the things that the Spirit is doing in your lives. And, and we can only imagine the number of lives that the three of you are touching. So we want to hold to our, our, uh, our promise that these will be brief. And so we will sign off. But thank you so much. And those of you that are listening, if you want to contact us at info at kids at heart org with a Z, um, we would love to take more questions and there are ways even to follow up with the, the tool will ask you for more questions. So it, lots of different ways. We'd love to talk with you more. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>